Meghan Markle has never looked so awkward. Standing next to a similarly uncomfortable Prince Harry, the picture painted a thousand words, all of them miserable. On the plus side, the gruesome twosome were at least with each other for a rare moment of public togetherness. But if their video to promote online protection for children was in part to quash increasing reports that their marriage is on the rocks, Mission emphatically not accomplished. Uh, they appeared, to put it mildly, less than happy. Warmth was conspicuous by its absence. Why? Perhaps because at the troubled couple's Montecito Palace in the setting sun, the clouds are gathering for a rapidly escalating number of reasons. First, New President-elect Donald Trump has vowed to take a look at Harry's visa application and review his right to reside in California. Could this be the beginning of the end for the British royal's American dream? Now, fueling rumours that a marital split is imminent, Harry has staged yet another of his solo appearances, surprising the crowd at the Pat Tillman Foundation Honours Gala in Chicago. But where was Meghan? The ginger winger never seems to go anywhere with his wife these days. As one royal commentator Riley inquired, is Harry ever home anymore? The last time their Montecito majesties were all smiles was at their billionaire Hollywood chum Tyler Perry's 55th birthday party in September. Since then, no united front but a blizzard of indications that all is far from well on planet Sussex. And make no mistake, Republican Trump's triumph will have been almost as devastating for classic West Coast liberal Meghan as it was for her mortified husband. No wonder sources close to the couple believe that their recent purchase of a $7 million seaside mansion in Portugal may have been with a view to a possible permanent move. If Trump revokes his visa, Harry might have no choice. Lawyers fighting to make the Duke's residency application public insist that if their suspicions are confirmed, while American citizen Meghan can, of course, stay, the prince from across the pond will have to go. Meanwhile, Meghan's family feud turmoil is threatening to get even worse. Last week, in a bombshell exclusive interview with little old me, the Duchess's estranged brother, Thomas, Markle accused her of being cold, rude and fake. An actress playing the part of a pound store princess. Now her estranged sister Samantha is relaunching her legal case claiming that the Duchess wrongly maligned her in her Netflix documentary series. Seething Sam alleges that Mean Meg implied that she was part of a group spreading misinformation. And she says her famous sibling's charge is as incorrect as it is defamatory. A looming court drama is the last thing Meghan needs. It's important to stress, of course, that the Duchess denies that she slandered Samantha. But back to that video and the body language that told a worrying story. In a new dynamic, perennial leading Lady Meg very definitely played second fiddle, standing meekly by Harry's side as he issued forth with his customary new age virtue signaling psycho babble and then chiming in with the traditional my husband and I, a phrase made legendary by the late great queen who began almost every speech with those magic words. The big question is, how much longer will they be relevant for Meghan? Well, uh, yeah, a lot of trouble going on at Montecito, Samantha. Yeah, I've seen more chemistry in hostage videos uh, <laughs> than, than what I saw in that. And I genuinely think that there is really something fishy going on. Their relationship is clearly on the rocks. It's all the earmarkers. I mean, not being seen together for ages. Then this very constructed video comes out where it looks like they're both forced to be there. They're reading off a teleprompter. There's that I could see that they were not touching they were just side by side. And usually when you see them together, you know, she's always got her hands somewhere on him, sort of fondling him. I don't know. Anyway, it's, she's very touchy-feely usually. And there just wasn't this thing here. And Harry, you can see behind his eyes a lot of sadness and sort of almost disdain.
I just, I don't know, maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but I, I, it just, it wasn't the Harry and Meghan that we usually see. They look really stiff and awkward together. And what I didn't realise is that two days before, the New York Post, in their page six column, had said exactly the same thing. Everybody is looking at that and saying, there's something not right with this couple. You're saying, oh, she used to be touchy-feely all the time. I remember a lot of people saying, oh, can't you just stop pouring him? Can't you just stop leaving him alone? Well, that's what I mean. And yeah. now, and now, and now they're standing that. together side by now side. Now she's well, definitely well, doing that. You know, yeah. There's definitely something, something wrong here. The last time they, were, they looked happy together, as I said in my monologue, was back in September. They went to Tyler Perry's 55th birthday and they were smiling and touchy-feely in the back of a car then. But it looks like something has gone wrong it, since it, then. It was so depressing. Yeah. I mean, the actual content of the video was about as vacuous as I can imagine their relationship probably is. It, <laughs> no, ser sorry, Come seriously. On. No, there was nothing Come in there. I, I can't believe if I had to, I was, if I was forced to stand there and read out this psycho babble, I actually would really be questioning what am I doing with my life? And I think it harkens back to a bigger issue within their relationship where they're not exactly sure what direction they're going in right now. The, the actual video itself didn't imprint. Can you you remember one line from that video? Oh, cool. yeah, there was a lot of old uh, West Coast psycho babble as usual. Yeah, you know, exactly. Indecipherable, <laughs> you know, a load of old rubbish about, you know, interconnectivity and God knows what. So, you know, Meghan and Harry speak in a different language to the rest of us. They speak Californian. It's always you know, impossible to But the message they're trying to get across is a good one, isn't it? Don't yeah, you think? I and think, also, yeah, I don't and also, and I don't also, particularly want to knock them for that, but I think a couple of sort of uh, privileged people standing in their massive mansion, you know, going, oh, online harm for children, let's protect children. I'm not sure how much good it does. Listen, if it's something that puts that front and centre and means that more people yeah, oh, get yeah, to hear about well, it, yeah, then it's brilliant, a good thing. brilliant for them. <laughs> what a <laughs> couple. Stunning and brave. Oh, my I'm word. I'm sorry, unless I actually see them going to some victim's house, yeah. <laughs> going and helping a family, making a direct donation to someone's family who's lost uh, yeah. their child because of online bullying, I'm not going to rest. Good. But I know that it's going to be them on their iPhone. Oh, sorry, Megan, we have to go make this video yeah. outside our, yeah. our mansion today. Yeah, exactly right. And do you know... Uh, when they launched uh, this campaign a couple of months ago, they went to that cabin in the hills yes. and, and a few families of parents of kids who'd actually killed mm. themselves due to online harm. Uh, and uh, it was Harry and uh, Meg. Oh, so great to meet you, so great to meet you. And then on their website, it said, it, it said this is the campaign to protect parents. Uh, there will be no more personal meetings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, so they don't want to waste too much time on any of that. Precisely. All, apparently, it's all going to be done via Zoom yeah. online. They are, <laughs> Simon. They are, Simon, aren't they? A couple of virtue signaling frauds. Oh, I... look at us. I thought we'd do wonderful work. Nah, you're all out for yourself. You two. Everything they do is kind of sort of just bashed c completely. If you're giving time because to people, well, let me finish. If you're giving time to people and you're doing some, they're not giving time to people. They they're just well, making you just poxy, said they were. You just making poxy videos yeah, to make you themselves just, look good. You just said good. they were. You just I mean, said they were. And also giving I'm Zoom, not, I'm not, I'm not giving the Zoom time to people to talk about so, so that they can do that. I think that's quite good. And you did mention as well that that furore over the Pat Tillman Awards, Harry kind of manning up and going yeah, but, along to okay, the awards. So he went that to sort the, of stuff yeah, is... But the only take sort of away, the only takeaway from that, Simon, was he went on his own. I mean, do they but, go but, anywhere but it was together him, anymore? But it was him who They're was... They're never seen But it together. was him who was given Let the award. Let me awards. tell you, mate. I, told, if, I said this the, the other... The award was given to Harry. There is something going on here. There is something going on here. And by the way, uh, she now is back embroiled in this family dispute because... Uh, uh, Samantha Markle, her estranged sister, her half-sister, has relaunched this def defamation case against her, saying that in the video, uh, sorry, in the uh, Netflix, Netflix series, series <coughs> Megan makes it clear mm -hmm. that this is Samantha's case, mm -hmm. that Samantha was part of a group that uh, was basically putting so much misinformation online that they were encouraging people to kill some, um, uh, Megan. And that's what Megan said. Uh, and uh, Samantha said, I wasn't part of that group. I had nothing to do with that. And therefore, you've defamed me. So that case 
uh, is going back to appeal. She could be in court soon. OK, well, you, look, you glossed over the Pat Tillman thing. The award was given to Harry, so Meghan doesn't need to be there. That's the first thing. The second thing is what we said last week, or what I tried to say last week about... No, you can roll your eyes, but what I tried to say last yeah. week... Was this is a family? This is a family. This is a family. This is a family that is uh, that <laughs> always, always wants to play out their feuds for the camera in the courts and everything else. They can't just go somewhere, sit down and thrash it out. And so it's really difficult to feel sympathetic from my from where I sit for either side. I really, you know, why can't why does Samantha feel she has to take this to court again? Last week, Thomas Markle Jr. I think he said in that interview, I warned Harry off marrying Meghan before they even that, got married. And then he wants to be friends with her. And then he wants in, to kind in, of... in that brilliant interview? In that brilliant yeah. interview done by little old you. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I thought he was a decent guy. And I think that they are actually hurt by the fact that she has cast them aside. She's I cast say? them into oblivion. And it's because she's a little snob. Yeah. She wants to, as, as I said, said last week. She's a pound store princess. Mm -hmm. And she feels that her, if you like, sort of blue collar family, yeah don't make her look good. She likes to pretend she's from the top of the social ladder uh, in America, and she's just not. There's your problem. Yeah. Uh, but here's another thing that we must discuss with these two, because uh, Trump's coming for him, and uh, his visa application now almost certainly, if not made public, will be shown to Donald Trump. And if he lied on that visa application, or uh, uh, he... Uh, He's already admitted taking drugs. Uh, and if he lied, if he pretended he didn't on his application to reside in America, uh, Trump might kick him out. Trump doesn't want he, to be... He, he, Trump does not want to be doing too much poking around with visas with the way that his wife's family got their visas. I don't think that's a good... Oh, oh wait a minute. I don't right, think that's uh, a good let area me tell you for Trump Simon, to go. Let me tell you something, Simon. In America, Donald Trump can do right now whatever the hell he wants to do. And that's a he's scary just won, He just won Congress And that's well. a scary thought. He's got Congress, he's got Senate, he won virtually every state. The guy is all-powerful. So you say he shouldn't be messing around with visas. He'll do whatever he wants to do. And you think Harry would be top of his list? God, doesn't he, he have better no, things look, to look, do? Look, 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 the thing I love about Donald Trump uh, is, 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 a, is everything. It's not everything. If we can just pull you out of his backside for a second, he, tell no, us. No, 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 no. Yeah, uh, still, he's still hurting, isn't <laughs> yeah. he? Oh, the God, your girl. Well, wasn't she useless? How bad did she do? How wrong were you? You were so wrong. Yes. I mean, so... Make your point, Kevin uh, O'Sullivan. That, 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 he, that he is a disruptor. He uh, may find it amusing to mess around with Harry. I'll tell you one thing, at the very least, he'll make Harry very, very nervous. And Donald Trump loved, loved the Queen and uh, still feels very upset about the way Harry and Meghan treated the, the poor uh, sovereign in her final year. Right, Samantha? I think that he... I, I saw this video of him on his private jet sort of really proudly showing um, the photos yeah, of yeah, him yeah. with, uh, you know, the Queen in her final years. And obviously, he had a pretty special relationship with her. So he clearly... <laughs> no, no, he... What? No, he didn't. Uh, no, I, I, I'm going to go with Simon no, on this Trump one. did not have a special relationship no, no. No, with he, the Queen. He, he thought... Please, he... I mean, I have to sit here and listen to some... No, 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 I'm, I'm going with you but on this one, one, Simon. That, that dog is, don't that hunt. is pushing it. That dog don't He liked hunt. to think he had a special relationship well, with the, the Queen. Well, that's the effect she had on a lot of I people. Think, <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think the Queen was over enamoured of him. Do you remember that time when she, he remember. just sort yeah, of walked yeah. right in front of her? Yeah, he didn't really uh, care for her. He was about twice as tall of yeah, her. Yeah, and she was downwind. But, she, but he had a great affection for uh, the Queen and this country. Of course, Keir Starmer's screwing that up in spades, but there you go. Anyway, you've got some questions from our lovely audience. Yeah, well, going back to the bullying we discussed earlier, the bullying uh, that Megan likes to, you know, try and quash on the internet, Valerie has said, Megan loves to bully senior citizens. The Queen, her own father, Prince Philip, elder abuse is on the rise, sadly. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. She, why does she, why does she have such a, a dim view of old people? She falls out with the Queen. Her dad has she has a problem with her dad. That's hardly going around bullying she, senior she citizens. She is clearly she's clearly so going funny. around. She's, she's at a care home she's now. She's atrociously gaslighting. She's the, atrociously <laughs> ageist. It's quite it's clear. More like, I Let's have another she's question. Got a, she's got a problem with authority and anyone that yeah. tries to tell her that she's I'll tell you, not... She does. I'll tell yeah. you what she's got a problem with. Her husband. Uh, anyway, what's next? He's a whipped next? man. Um, 
Marino says, nobody has seen the kids, not the king of the UK, neither her father or the public. I don't believe that she has kids. Well, you know, it was a nice picture of the kids. I believe, that was just yeah, what Instagram. the back of their heads. No, no, there was a picture of all of them. That's yeah. the first time I've seen. Yeah, I think the first time I've seen them anyway. But there's a great picture on Instagram of all of them. Yeah. But everybody says the kids aren't hers, and that she had yeah, well, a like, well, yeah. There's a whole load of conspiracy well, that's, theories. That's because uh, her and Harry, couple of idiots, go to the ends of the earth to sort of. You know, like bring down the shutters and make sure no one ever sees their You're kids. You're allowed to me, do it's that. It's not about yeah. that. It's yeah, actually, but it's obsessive. I can it's tell silly. you. You know, pictures of her with the back of the kids' heads. You're allowed to do they, that. They wouldn't, even tell us, they wouldn't even tell us what the first one was called yeah, for about six months. Yeah, but you're allowed to do that. She's gatekeeping it for that sweet paycheck. Can okay. Tell that much. Okay, yeah. maybe maybe she is, but I don't she, think it's right that you kind of attack people who want to protect their children from being in the pro yeah, in the public eye. Harry that. had a real He's problem. He's a member of the royal Harry, family. Yeah, but yeah, but you're still a, you're still allowed to protect your children from the gaze of. Um, you know, the, well, and especially with the sort of crap yeah, but, that is written about well, both they, of they them. they wouldn't get crap written about them if they were a bit more sensible about their kids. The, oh, the, no, no, of course. The fact that they course, never You would not say any crap. <laughs> the, the fact they never show their kids to anyone uh, leads to all these conspiracy theories. And now, time for a bad ad. Soldiers in battle depend on clear vision to hit their targets. Now you can get that same HD clarity with Battle Vision by Atomic Beam. Hi, I'm Hunter Ellis, and I wear Battle Vision by Atomic Beam for crystal clear vision when it matters most. Sunglasses. You can bend them and twist them because Battle Vision is built atomic tough. The secrets, the shape memory polymer that delivers unmatched flexibility. And the frames snap back to their original shape just like new. But watch this. After being hit with rat shot from just over 10 feet away, the front of the lens is scratched, but check it out. It's still intact. Now that's what I call a tough lens. So if somebody fires a bullet at you and it hits you in the glasses, you're gonna be fine. Uh, um, I'm gonna get a pair of those. They look good, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, very good. Americans, they love those wraparound things, don't yeah, they? You know, yeah, I have. They I make you look like Robocop. Battle <laughs> vision. God bless America. Time to go to a real break. What just happened? He's mad as hell. It's Kevin O'Sullivan. Ah, welcome back to What Just Happened. This is part two, and we always begin part two with the big moment. Not much doubt about it in my mind. It was that incredible tea party, if you like, between Donald Trump <laughs> and Joe Biden. They chatted for two genial hours. You know why? because they both got the result they wanted. True? Yeah, absolutely true. I think I, I was loving sort of the photos that were coming out. Jill came and joined, who equally hates Kamala. In fact, I think she hates Kamala more than Joe does. Yeah. Um, it was sort of this I hate Kamala uh, meetup that yeah. so happened, so to speak. And I think that it shows that, um, you know, the real truth behind it all, let's just say. Yeah, I think that... Uh, Biden, Biden's loving it, you know, because he, he always told, you, told uh, the Democrats, I can do a better job than her. And incredibly, I think he's right. I think yeah. he would have done better. You couldn't have done worse than what... No, Simon, you could not have done worse said, than what on, she did. Come on, come let, on. Let's... That was... She was catastrophic. It was actually yeah, listen, the worst it was listen, like I'm, not, I'm not going to sit here and say Kamala did well, but I am not going to sit here and say that Joe Biden, got that, that debate, that debate, you've got such short memories. Remember how I bad he was. Remember the debate. How bad he was in the debate. Yeah. For him to have, they would have taken another debate like that. The, the Republicans would have taken another debate like that and he would have, um, that, that would have just awful. And that, you talk about elder abuse, making Joe Biden go campaigning would have been elder abuse. Yeah, they I, should I guess not so, have done but, but that. He would have lost and he would have lost quite badly. Not as badly as Kamala because blue collar America quite likes old Joe. He's, okay. a, he's a Delaware guy, you know, okay. he's down to earth. Uh, and they can't stand Kamala. They hate Kamala because she lives in a kind of airy fairy uh, woke bubble. And Joe Biden and Joe Biden is a gentleman, you know. He, he invited Trump. Remember what Trump did? Trump didn't invite Joe Biden. Trump kind of sulked like a well, no. whiny little. No, no, no. Trump, Trump, he wouldn't, he, Trump, Trump didn't is such do it. A, Trump is such a child, and actually, to see no, well, how classy it's not, Biden. It's not Biden being a classy Biden was. 
to get Trump no, no, there no, and everything why? else. Why? Why? This is, this is cause my Because he, he was loving let, it. Let me finish. It's not about him being a gentleman. This is, this is it's my... about him celebrating the fact that Kamala got stuffed. This is my problem. This is my problem. I yeah. do not have a problem with the Republicans. I have a problem with Trump. He is the worst of us. And, you know, the fact that he's in, I have to suck it up. That is democracy, but he is a terrible, terrible person. And Joe Biden just doing what he did just kind of highlighted that in a way for me. Right, and uh, this is another big moment. Uh, Trump hiring uh, the richest man in the world. Take a look. And President-elect Trump continues to make selections for his new administration. He recently tapped Tesla CEO Elon Musk and conservative activist Vivek Ramaswamy to lead a new Department of Government Efficiency. Trump says he is fulfilling a campaign promise to give Musk sweeping oversight of federal spending. Trump says this new department will help, quote, dismantle government bureaucracy and slash excess regulation. Great appointment, right, uh, Simon? I think the actual office itself is a really good idea. I think all governments are overblown. I think actually slimming down and sort of to making sure that tax dollars or tax pounds are spent efficiently are great. Um, the fact that it means that Elon Musk is basically marking his own homework and somebody worked out that in the time that Trump has been, um, uh, as tr tr Trump has been president-elect, his wealth has got exponentially gone oh, up. Yeah, he's you a... are kind of helping make the richest man richer. So I don't Good. know whether that's Good. a great What's wrong with that? Good for him. Yeah. Uh, he's a brilliant man. He'll do this well. You know, in America, Samara, there are... See, I've got the name right there. <laughs> Samara. Samara. <laughs> Elder that's abuse. Come on. Let's have Samara a go. Samara Markle. Daily, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the... America has over 400 government agencies. And do you know that they don't actually know the exact number of agencies because there are so many, and they genuinely believe there are some agencies uh, still in operation that they've forgotten about. Uh, yeah. So he's going to go, uh, Musk will go through them like a dose of salts. And I think the best thing he said, is he said, he said, uh, I'm just going to uh, ask everyone what their job is. And if I don't understand it, they're out of here. <laughs> Yeah, like what he did at Twitter, actually. Yeah. He did a very similar sort of clean out. But I've got a bit of a different theory on this whole Dodge uh, department thing. Obviously, they're saying that it's meant to shut down by 2026 because they want to have finished the job by then. Yeah. Um, but I actually think that I love Vivek. I love Elon. But I think that this is Trump's way of saying, hey, this is your thing. Please get away from your kind of groupies to me in the best way possible. Oh, and this is going to be your thing, Department of Government Efficiency. This is just my opinion. And then he's just going to say, OK, get off my back and I'm going to run I the don't, country. I, I, don't, I, don't I do ag think I, it's a little bit just like shoving. I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I mean, it, I think he's given, in his view, he's given Musk, Simon, one of the most important jobs in Washington because that government is a mess. You can't get anything done in uh, Washington because it's such a jungle. So many departments, so many agencies overstaffed to an obscene degree. So uh, cutting back on all of that. I mean, you, you don't need to halve the amount of government employees. You need to take it down to by about 80%. It is so Listen, we overblown. We used, to have, yeah, we used yeah. to have the same thing. Do you remember under Blair, there was a lot of quangos. Were they called quangos? And yeah, sort yeah. of all these yeah. different um, yeah. departments and everything else. And so I, I do not have a problem with somebody going in and reducing that. Um, You've, you, I tried not to do it, but you baited me and I have yeah, to. Yeah. Elon Musk, though, is, he's also this You're going to say he's an idiot or something. No, we agreed. We agreed. We played that game. Oh, is, he, is he a genius yeah. or an idiot? And I said, can, can, can I say he's both? Pass. Because I think he's both. And I do actually think that Musk is a sort of ticking time bomb. I think that Musk... For everything he's done, he's right wing. Uh, no, no, not because Therefore he's right. Therefore, he must be bad. Not because he's right wing. I just think that he is one of those people, and we saw it in the first administration for Trump. Yeah. He surrounded himself with people who kind of blew up in his face, it, 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 and I think that I think that Musk is one of those. I don't think Musk can be constrained, yeah. and I think that to, to Samara's point, he's trying to put him over there where he can sort of just get on with it. But Musk isn't somebody yeah, who wants to be. I he's going he's gonna to nervously back himself into the limelight, he, 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 and I think that will come and blow up in Trump's face. He, he's, well, the thing about old Trump is, you know, if you look at all of his appointments so far, or a lot of them, uh, shall we say, 
there are little controversial. Oh, that's oh, but, 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 he, but, he, but he's doing it deliberately. Yeah. He's a disruptor. Yeah, he is. Sod the old ways, he's going to do it his way. <laughs> it's, and this time, he will do it his way because he's got total control because your hero, Kamala, and those de dozy dam Democrats were so disastrous that uh, he's won everything. He's won Congress, he's won the Senate, he's won the presidency. He is God in Washington now and he can do pretty much anything he wants. You've got some more questions there, Samara. Yes. Uh, Kamala Harris's advisor has told CNN that Joe Biden should resign so that she can be the 47th president. What do you think? Kevin? So what's that question again? <laughs> Did your voice go up any higher? Essentially, fire? Kamala Harris's advisor has said um, Joe Biden should resign so that she can become the president. Oh, right, the, between the now last, and like, January the 20th. Days. Oh, God, you know... Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, here, watch this. Joe Biden has been a phenomenal president. He's lived up to so many of the promises he's made. There's one promise left that he could fulfill, being a transitional figure. He could resign the presidency in the next 30 days, make Kamala Harris the president of the United States. Whoa. He would absolve wow. her from being able to, ha to, from having to oversee the January 6th transition, right, of, of, her, of her own defeat. This is the moment for us to change the entire is... perspective of how Democrats Okay, operate. this has now jumped from an internet meme these people are deranged this is like what absolutely. a ridiculous suggestion yeah, that's, that's kamala what... harris kamala harris is yesterday's <laughs> news she is returning to the obscurity for which she was designed. She is an empty vessel, a moron, okay. a useless Come candidate. On. And to make her president now, you must be joking. Do you know how undemocratic this is? You know how there was so much hullabaloo about January 6th and everything, which of course I understand, but that was all about the, trace, the peaceful transition of power. The Democrats are basically putting someone who did not win any popular vote, Senate, House, yeah. any... Yeah. Electorate college votes. They put. They're wanting to put her in yeah. power now. Yeah, that, that, How that, democratic is that? That idiot. Simon? That idiot is is still suffering from derangement syndrome. You know <laughs> they can't handle. You know, frankly, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but uh, the idea, it doesn't matter what happens between now and January the 20th. Uh, Biden should carry on uh, because Kamala Harris, uh, as you say, has been you know, phenomenally rejected by the American people. To make her president would be, you know, to stick two fingers up, or in America, one finger up, uh, to the population of that great country. Mm -hmm. uh, look, I mean, it's a ridiculous idea, and the guy must be high to even suggest it. Yeah. Look, you, you, you know, she's been, as you say, the electorate have rejected her. You don't try and force that upon them. Um, Joe Biden stays in place. It's just very interesting, though, to see um, your typical... You are the Trump derangement syndrome people. You can wriggle and squirt. No, 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 no. no. you Wait. can wriggle and... Well, let me finish. Time of let our me, lives. Let me Time of our lives. Let me finish. You can wriggle and squirm all you like. I'm not wriggling You can wriggle and squirm. We all won. You... We no, won. You you're wriggle. the wriggler let and the squirmer. Let me finish, because you don't know what no, I'm going to no, say. No, 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 you're wriggling and squirming. What do you, you want to can... say, then? I'm trying to say, like, Religious all idiot. of a sudden, all of a sudden, you're, you're big fans of Joe when he invites Trump along and everything else. Yeah. If the Democrats wanted to do that with Kamala Harris, it still would be in no way as obscene and absurd as what Trump organised on January the 6th four years ago. Ooh. So he could have... So I wouldn't have a problem is, with mate? it. That, do you know what that is? Yep. History, yeah, long ago history. Not and that the American long ago. people knew all about it. They had all the facts, yeah, and they said, "This guy, we're going to vote for him." And they did, and they did uh, resoundingly. They did. Uh, uh, you've got another question? Yeah, really interesting one. Um, Keir Starmer and the Taliban went to COP29 this week. Is the world finally taking climate change seriously? Simon, I think that's one for you. Well, uh, no, it's one for me. <laughs> <laughs> Keir yeah, Star far no, be it for Kev not to be Keir able to have his say. Yeah, Keir Starmer, <laughs> uh, who ludicrously uh, was seen in Paris before on Armistice Day, standing in the back of a jeep uh, with Macron. It was look, look at this. I mean, it's so weird. I mean, I, I'm going to say this. It, it looks a bit like the Nazis. You know that they, you know, Hitler and his mates used to stand in vehicles going past the troops. Margaret Thatcher I did mean, it in a tank. This, no, she didn't stand there like that. That was one of the most bizarre, absurd things a British prime minister has ever done. And why the hell was that? Was that idiot Starmer in France 
and not in his own country on the sacred moment of armistice, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. What the hell was he doing over there? I think it's really there? good that Macron invited... Um, no, 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 they, no, no, no. They've never had... He could have gone after the after 11 a.m. Have... What was he doing there? <laughs> well, it's a betrayal looks, of his own country. He looked like he was... But to get <laughs> a back betrayal to, of his own country. To get back... Oh, come on! It was. Come on, it's You not should a be in your own country at that point. It's not a betrayal of his own country. It's outrageous. It's a disgusting thing. This is why we have to dial the... You don't go over and spend it with the French. You know what it was a betrayal of as well? Brexit, which anyone... Come forgotten on. about that? It's like because it he a... loves Europe. He loves Europe. with his EU mates yeah. at this special time. Anyway, then Cop. he got then he got on a plane and flew all the way to Baku in Azerbaijan for the not much COP29 well uh, festival well of hypocrisy. Please load, that one. Load of rubbish. Load of rubbish. Uh, and uh, it was pointless what he did there. Everything you know, the COP COP29, uh, the only Significant people who went, who didn't go? Uh, Macron, funnily enough, Olaf Scholz from Germany didn't go. Uh, Modi, the leader of India, didn't go. Obviously, Putin didn't go. Uh, Ursula von der Leyen, the leader of the EU, didn't go. Uh, no one went. No one at all went except for Starmer and the Taliban. Uh, good, <laughs> eh? Good, eh? That, that, this, I, think this might, I don't think they'll bother with COP30 in Brazil because it just fell apart of the scenes. At the, you know, because Trump cast a hu huge cloud about it. And did you see uh, the footage? It was just re these massively empty halls with these idiots still droning on about this <clears throat> climate change claptrap that uh, I don't think we can do anything about. I'm with Donald Trump. He says that the climate change emergency is a hoax. Uh, everybody accepts the climate is changing, it always has, but the fact it's an emergency and the belief that somehow or other if we drive electric cars, the planet is saved, that's a hoax. And Time for a bad ad. The atomic bomb is one of the most powerful forces on Earth. The atomic beam is one of the most powerful flashlights on Earth. Hi, I'm Hunter Ellis, and this is Atomic Beam USA. It's tough enough to withstand this 36-ton fire truck, yet it's lightweight, compact, and portable enough for everyday use. Heavy downpours, mud puddles, even extreme temperatures like boiling hot oil or being frozen solid in a block of ice are no match. If the power goes out, the atomic beam can light up the entire room. I've never seen a flashlight this bright before. We're gonna drop it hundreds of feet from this helicopter. It hits the tarmac, and it's still working. That's what I call a tough flashlight. You'll also get a lifetime guarantee. If it ever breaks, for any reason, you get your money back. Where did I put, where's my torch? It's in the chip pan. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> Old Hunter Ellis, he's the guy with the battle glasses but what, as yeah. well. What is Hunter Ellis's day job? Yeah, yeah, yeah Hunter Ellis. He needs a, a torch that's in a... <laughs> Uh, hot oil, I, yeah. he's dropping them out of <laughs> aeroplanes when he's not being shot at in yeah, the yeah. eyes. I'd like, I, I'd like I, to I'm meet... I'm never hanging out with Hunter. I, I, I was going to say, I'd like to meet Hunter Ellis, no, but wouldn't. then again, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> uh, let's go to a real break. What just happened? He's mad as hell. It's Kevin O'Sullivan. Well, welcome back to What Just Happened. We're having a humdinger of a show. Uh, we're still celebrating Donald Trump's victory because it uh, really annoys uh, Simon London, and it's worth it just for that. You've got some more questions tomorrow. Does the Archbishop of Canterbury deserve to lose his job over its latest child abuse scandal? Uh, I think he not only deserves to lose his job, he deserves uh, to be talked to very seriously by the police. Uh, the story that seems to be emerging uh, for Americans uh, and our audience around the world, Australia, Canada, Latvia, you know me. We're watched all over the world, folks, but for our uh, viewers in other countries, uh, we've just lost the head of our national religion, the Church of England. Uh, Archbishop Justin Welby has had to resign because he knew about the activities of a prolific paedophile who worked for the Church of England and he didn't report it. Uh, so he's had to resign in shame. Uh, now, I don't know how much he knew. We don't know the whole story. But if he knew as much as some of the things uh, some people are saying, then, uh, yeah, he's gone, quite rightly. He did the right thing there. Uh, but uh, he needs to be talked to by the police because he could be complicit in this. Yeah. 
Yeah, Sorry, no, um, no, no, why not? Do you agree, please. Simon? Uh, do I get to answer yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, you do. Okay, excellent. Um, yeah. you, two, you two can be in this bit. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> uh, look, anybody who covers up uh, any abuse to children and has, I think you go if you're, I, go, I think you go, have to go if you cover it up intentionally. I think you have to go if you're incompetent. There is never any excuse, and we shouldn't give anybody that that room of the wriggle room to sort of argue, oh, I didn't really know why I thought somebody else was going to do it. If you're incompetent and children carry on being abused under your watch, you have to go. There was, his position was untenable. And the fact that he came out earlier and said, um, I'm not going to resign over this, that just enraged people. Yeah. You know, you've, you've got to go. If it's on your watch, you have to go. And I just don't, I think we have zero tolerance around abuse of children because they, so they, they, they can't defend themselves. Yeah, again, it's, again for it's our, really, really bad. Again, for our uh, viewers around the world, uh, this it, it was a guy called John Smythe. He was a barrister and he kind of ran these Church of England summer camps for kids, for little boys. And I'm not going to go into the details of what he did to them, but uh, it's just horrific. It's horrific. Uh, now, uh, Justin Welby, the Archbishop, has known him since the 1970s. They exchanged Christmas cards, etc. Uh, and uh, he says, that uh, Welby says, that when he found out about this, it was in 2013, that he thought someone else had reported it to the police. I think that's a very thin excuse. It's just not good enough. Very. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, Samantha, I think the reason... <laughs> I did it again! <laughs> I, did the, that I wish we hadn't brought Samantha Markle into this show. <laughs> nurse, nurse, uh, yeah. <laughs> nurse, he's doing it again, nurse, yeah. nurse. Oh, sorry, that's funny. <laughs> oh, ah, ha, ha, ha. Simon's being funny there. <laughs> Not really. Uh, yeah, so, so the thing yeah. is that, he, that Welby, I think the reason Welby tried to cling on is he said, well, this guy isn't a priest. He's actually a barrister. Uh, he's dead now. He got away with it. Because Welby didn't report it to the police, the guy went to his grave uh, untouched by justice. So these poor 132 boys, he uh, violently, viciously abused, never got justice. That's so wrong, isn't it? Yeah, I think we always really need to be careful of these, <laughs> I hate to use the phrase, but higher than thou people that act as if they're always better in their views and values than us. I think we always will remember Justin Welby as this sort of woke Archbishop of Canterbury that didn't actually do his job properly, but focused on yeah. really um, getting involved in politics and getting involved with the LGBTQ community yeah. and climate change and everything like that. I mean, he was a really crappy... <laughs> he was a really uh, he was crappy archbishop. It was a woke lefty who went round uh, all concert Tory policies, conservative yeah. policies, kept saying they were against the will of God. You know, uh, Brexit was evil and ungodly. The Rwanda scheme was ungodly. Yeah. He used his uh, religious cloak to uh, criticise right-wing policies. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, under his watch, with all this wokery, this lefty... Clap trap. Yep. He alienated his congregations. They <clears throat> they plummeted in size, and uh, they had to close three thousand churches. He was yes. an absolute disaster. And for the church, it's uh, pretty uh, relieving that he's yes. gone. Yes, listen, I, listen. I, I, I don't agree with everything that you you said there. I think that if you have a vote in your country, then you're allowed to have an opinion about the government. Yeah, but you don't in the use country. The so no, let's. Yeah. No, no, I think we're doing a question. Let's do we're another We're doing a question. question. <laughs> um, after four and a half months, there have been no developments on the Manchester airport case. What is going on? Again, to sh tell everyone around the world, on July the 23rd, uh, two Muslim brothers were filmed uh, beating the hell out of three on-duty British policemen at Manchester airport. Uh, one of them was a woman, uh, a, a woman police officer. She had her nose broken. You see the blood everywhere. She had to go to hospital. All three cops had to go to hospital. Pummeling them, they're like this, like this. Uh, and uh, here we are in uh, November, middle of November. Those Muslim brothers have still not been charged. Uh, and uh, the uh, suggestion is, and I agree with it, <laughs> because the authorities are terrified of Islamophobia. Mm -hmm. uh, they're giving them special treatment because they're Muslims, right, Simon? No, and the first well, thing... Well, hang on, why has it taken well, so long then? Right, Simon? No, hang on. Um, I, first of all... Got to go to a break now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. First of all, first of all, <laughs> these guys, what they did to that woman is terrible and it's an un unconscionable and they should be... They should be hauled up in front of a judge and sentenced and they should go to... I don't know why it's taking so long. 
Does it matter? They're Muslim. No. Does it matter that they're Muslims? Does it matter? I don't yeah. believe it does, so. It does to the Crown Prosecution. No, I don't yeah. believe it's so. Actually, I don't believe no, so. Actually... Look, look, look. I, I've, I've interviewed many uh, senior coppers about this. Now, the file on this uh, shocking incident, which is all on film, you know, these guys going like this to on-duty coppers. Uh, that what was went... her religion? Hmm? What was her religion? That's not the point. Well, it is the point. No, no, if you're no, going no, around, no, 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 no. No, it is the point. If we go around... So hang on. Wait, Jewish, I haven't Christian, finished. Muslim. I haven't finished. Wait, yeah. That she file... She was Muslim, by the way. Manchester She's wearing a hijab. Police, Manchester Police's file went to the Crown Prosecution Service on August the 15th. Uh, every copper I have interviewed about this, they cannot, for the life of them, come up with any explanation why it's taken so long to bring charges against these guys who pummeled these coppers, if they're going to bring them at all. Uh, and the only explanation is the authorities here constantly are terrified of offending the Muslim community. But they're not, that's, that's what it is, not isn't true. it? They are. Oh my God. That's just they not are. True. They've literally said the police officers that are working on the case have said, no, we need to consult with the uh, with, the, with the brotherhood of the yeah. like sort of with the leader of the community. And there's a real issue in this country with two-tier policing at the moment. And it's this case is really at the yeah. heart of a lot of that yeah. because they're saying, how did they very easily lock up a bunch of people that were at the riots during the summer? And then why has this taken and months? Muslims, and, no, 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 no. and some Muslims were locked up for rioting. You know Where? that to be true. Where? You know that Where? to be true. Where? Birmingham. During the riots. No, Birmingham. During the riots. Oh, come off it. During the riots that happened. Why some did of, they call the Southport si uh, suspect? Let me finish. During the riots that happened, where we locked up all the people He's, for rioting. Oh, but it's on, true. Simon. It's really but it's true. There were some Muslim people who. There were some people who went out with swords and stuff, and they were locked up straight away as well. It's they not had. Even about they had swords in justice. Birmingham. I don't know where well, it they was, weren't but it was during up. the riots. They weren't locked up. They were locked up. In Birmingham, they were given the, custodial in Birmingham sentences. the police didn't go to the Muslim They were riot. given custodial sentences. So you have put two it's together. Not, it's not about Islam. So you don't Islam. think Muslims get special treatment by the authorities? No, I don't. I do. OK, so it's, why... Uh, no, I don't. I've been stopped enough be time, careful here, I've been why, stopped why enough time by the police. Why and so has my son, for me to not believe that to be true. Why did, why did they tell us that the suspect in the South Port murders, he's still just a suspect, by the way. Uh, why did they tell us uh, he was Welsh? I think because when he, was, he had... When his family were from Rwanda. But I think he had that Welsh nationality. That was to put us on the, off I think the he had, I think he had Welsh nationality and the parents were supposed to be... were, were Christian and then they found out afterwards... Uh, so, wait there, let me answer the question. If you're going to ask me a question, just let me answer it, OK? I think at the time... Um, tempers were running high, and yeah, they, exactly. Tempers exactly. were running high, they and lied to, to us. No, but if you lie to us, if they you, lie to us if you, because they're worried about kind of racial. If you'd have tension. come out the other they way, think they if treat it us like out, children. If it had come out the other way, and you'd they said, they always do. They lie to if us. If it had come out the other way, and people had gone and firebombed the parents' house, and it turned out that they were Christian, then what, how would people yeah, have? When, when, how would have people the reacted then? How would the people react then? When the authorities know that the suspect is Muslim or uh, of ethnic origin, they usually lie to us in case we all get furious about migrants and things like that. That's what mm. happens every single time. They treat us like children and it's got to stop. So if I do something, so if I go and break the law later you on... You haven't the, noticed If I go and break the law later on this evening, am I Simon London or am I Simon London the black guy? Or am I Simon London the Christian? You can't, you can't just suddenly categorise people well, no, 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 based that, on... Well, the police will probably say... You can't categorise people based on police will, your the, own kind of... The police, will probably say, the police will probably say British citizen Simon London. Yeah. They wouldn't say black because that no, might... No, but you two they, might they do. Think, they treat us like children, that we can't uh, deal with this information, that maybe the suspect is a migrant, maybe the suspect is Muslim, you know, and that's what's going on in Manchester. The authorities, Manchester Police, the Crown Prosecution Service are terrified of this case because they're Muslim. And what did people do? They don't do? want to offend the people Muslim went, community. People went, and people went and wrecked a mosque even though they hadn't been told he was a Muslim. So what would have happened if they had said this person has... Um, Islamic sympathies. What would have happened then? That, that's what they did when they were told it wasn't a Muslim. What would have happened if they had told it's a Muslim? The police aren't just there to well, arrest don't people. Don't lie to us. They're also no, there, don't they're lie also to us. there they're to protect lying the to community. Us. They're lying to us because they think we cannot be trusted with this information. They didn't. The police didn't even turn up for the Muslim riot in Birmingham. Anyway, we're going to go to a real break. What just happened?
he's mad as hell, it's Kevin O'Sullivan. Welcome back to What Just Happened. It's time for the tweets. What do you got? All right, Elizabeth said, Simon, stand strong. Everything you say is correct. There are many millions of us who are shocked, dismayed, and scared that Trump is elected. This will be a very rocky road for the next four years for Trump and my country. Trump won't be good for America, and I will watch this unfold with you. Uh, so disappointed Simon not only supports Megzi, but also Kamala. Shame. I quite like him. Thank you, Mary. You can still like why, why would you do that? By, by the way, thank you for all the messages, as always. Uh, these are the messages. They're not tweets. They're your messages that you sent to this program, and we appreciate it. What else you got? Maureen says, Simon comment, Simon's comments just amaze me. I can't believe he believes what he's saying. It seems that there must be a perpetual voice of opposition. Are you bloody deaf, dumb, and blind? Oh, my gosh, Maureen, oh, vicious. Oh, are you? I am not deaf. I am not dumb. I am not blind. <laughs> well, and if... <laughs> If well, you can, uh, if I, I tell agreed you what, with you all the time, two what out a boring of, show. Two out of three ain't bad. You are <laughs> dumb. Uh, another? Well done, Simon, for wearing your Trump hat. You gave in gracefully. I did not. <laughs> At least you stick to your belief. I don't agree, by the way. Thank you, um, Yvonne. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> We've got that picture of you with the uh, MAGA hat on, and uh, we always will have it. <laughs> I'm sure we'll taunt you with it again. I'm sure you will. What you got? <laughs> Terry says, the way Simon smirks when anybody says something he doesn't agree with is absolutely disgusting. I'm sad to say uh, his mother <laughs> and father have a lot to answer for. He has a lack of manners, and he is ignorant. <laughs> Oh my God. That's, that's, that's really going deep, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Parental Thanks, <Terry>. background. <laughs> Thanks, Terry, for the, for the therapy session. <laughs> I owe you. Kevin, you're annoying me now. Ah. Join the club. Yeah. It's not just lots of American women that are against abortion. Christians, open brackets, and probably other religions, close brackets, women here are against it as well. Probably some atheist women too. It's not something that's exclusive to America. That was from Mary Hayworth. Well, I, okay, well, I didn't mean that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, I, I suppose, all over the world, uh, a lot of women are against abortion. A lot of women are for abortion. Think about it was a big factor, allegedly, in the American election. That's why I was referring to American women. And I do think in this country, in Britain, we do, many people do not understand that a lot of women, a lot of American women are just as much against abortion as a lot of American men are. Time for a bad ad. Wouldn't you like to meet her? Not with that smile. Look at that face, but those teeth are terrible. Now there's Active Bright, the natural teeth whitening system made with activated coconut charcoal powder, so you can smile with confidence. It's so simple to use. Watch, apply a small amount of Active Bright to your toothbrush and start brushing. Then rinse clean for the whitest, brightest teeth you've ever seen. Healthy and natural, Active Bright is charcoal in color, yet minty for fresh breath. Safe enough to use every day, and you'll see results the very first time you use it. Teeth, my favorite subject. Uh, my tooth has been falling out all week. Uh, it's a veneer. And uh, next week, it'll be permanent. Uh, if you go onto social media, you can see it. It fell out live on air. I just tweeted the good news. He's finally confirmed That's my tooth. Kev's tooth has just come <laughs> out. It's fucking. He's finally confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> I've been done this whole show hoping it wouldn't fall out and Simon's been hoping it would, so you lose again. <laughs> Thanks very much to... There it is. <laughs> Thanks very much to Simon London, I suppose. Thank you to Samara Gill. Uh, thank you to me. Thank you to all of you for watching. We'll be back next week, same time, same place, for another edition of What Just Happened!